Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Lehman with Math with Mrs. Lehman. I'm here with my third period class. Say hello. Hello. Hi, we are going to do a um, hopefully brief, <laughs> more brief, uh, version of the um, YouTube video today. We have lesson 13, exit ticket here, statements of order in the real world. The first question here says Lonnie and Daryl call each other from different sides of Watertown. You'll notice that Watertown is located right here at point zero. Their locations are shown on the number line using miles, below using miles. Use absolute value to explain who is a further distance from Watertown. So I'm going to take a look at people's papers and I'm looking at William's paper right now and he is proving who is further using math, okay? So just like an ELA class where you have to make a claim and then back it up with text evidence, in math you're doing the same thing. You have to show somebody what evidence, what mathematical thinking you used to find the answer, okay? So, um, it's called showing your work. On William's paper, he has the absolute value of 10 equals what? What's the absolute value of 10? 10, right? Because absolute value means the distance from? Zero. Zero. Very good. All right, so this is our friend Daryl. And here we have Lonnie, right? His distance is 6 to the left of 0. So the absolute value of negative 6 is, everybody? 6. Good. All right, so the question is, who is a further distance from Watertown? So there's our math to prove that who is further away. Daryl, yep. So Daryl is further away. Now the qu next part of that question is how much closer is one than the other? How much? By how much is the other guy closer? What do you think, Will? By four. By four. How did you get that? Oh, sorry. I like totally walked away from him as he was explaining that whole thing. <laughs> sorry. I, uh, I subtracted 10 from 6 uh, to get 4 because I knew that, that, that they would only be like 4 apart. So. Very good. Nice, nice job. All right, so Daryl is further away by 4 miles. And I came over here because I wanted to make sure that you have this written down because as, oops, minus 6 equals 4. As silly as that seems to write that down, that's showing your work, okay? In your head, you said, oh, this guy's 10, this guy's 4 away or I'm sorry, six away, that's a difference between them um, of how far they are from Watertown of four. Now, how far apart is Lonnie from Daryl total? How far apart are the guys? Liz? Very good, 16. Yeah, so Lonnie is um, six away here, right? And this distance here is 10, so 10 plus 6 is a total distance of 16. But this question is asking how much closer one is to Watertown than the other. So, anyway, Claude recently read that no one has ever scuba dived more than 330 meters below sea level. I don't know if that's true or not. I guess I'm going to have to research that. But anyway, um, below sea level, describe what this means in terms of elevation. So that's simply asking what is the elevation of that scuba diver that went that far? Um, sea the sea level is zero, and you go down 330 meters, so it is negative. Very good, well said. So negative 330 meters. Nice job, Elijah. Any questions on that bell ringer? Yes. Comments. Um, the only reason why you can't go th um, past 330 um, meters down because of the pressure, the pressure becomes so intense. It could squish you. Squish the divers. All right, here we go. We are going to move on to um, our review of ordered pairs. Um, so we're on page. We're skipping a few pages. We're going to page 58, please, in your module book. This is lesson 14. So we're going to do a quick review here. Ordered pairs. What's another name for ordered pairs? Another name for that. You might see this instead. Coordinates. Very good, Ethan. Coordinates. So let's write that down again. 
cell coordinates. How do we write coordinates? Coordinates. How do we write those? There's a format, a very specific format. Jaden? X coordinate and then Y coordinate. Very good. So in parentheses, we're going to write X comma Y. Our X coordinate always comes first. Nice job. All right. Um, a little bit more review. I'm going to draw these. What do we call these lines? Does anyone know? Begins with an A. Tim, you know? Yeah, very good. I'm going to let you say that into the mic. Axes. Very good. And he said that correctly. So this is the X axis, right? Whoops. Why did that not write? Oh, I did. Okay. And this is the Y axis. So they are the X and Y axes. All right. Where, or I'm sorry, what point do the X and Y axes meet? At what point? The origin. Very good. The origin. So this is the origin. What are the coordinates of the origin? Kyle? Zero. That's only one coordinate. We need two coordinates. Remember. Zero, zero. Very good. Zero, zero. So the coordinates of the origin are zero, zero. And overall, we call this entire thing the coordinate plane. Very good. So how many quadrants is the coordinate plane made up of? How many quadrants? Yes. Four. Four quadrants. Very good. So we'll learn about this more later, but here's quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. All right, so that's just a little review of the coordinate plane. Now we're going to look at this um, exit ticket for lesson 14. It says, on the map below, the fire department and the hospital have one matching coordinate. Determine the proper order of the ordered pairs in the map and write the correct ordered pairs for the locations of the fire department and the hospital. All right, and indicate which of their coordinates are the same. Sorry if that made you dizzy. Okay, so this is the fire department here. Now, most of the time, you're not going to see little buildings drawn on your paper. You're going to see a point. Um, so anyway, we're going to call this point F for the fire department. What would be the coordinates of point F? Ethan's doing a good job today. What do you think, Ethan? Six, seven. Very good. Six, seven. Over six and then up seven. And then the hospital, we'll call that point H, would be what? Willow? Ten, seven. Very good. Ten, seven. So they both have the same what coordinate? X or Y? Y coordinate. So um, let's say they share a Y coordinate to form what type of line? What type of line do they form? This horizontal. Very good. To form a horizontal line. Great. Any questions on that? Okay. We're going to move on because we're going to plot more points on here. It says the local bank has the same first coordinate as the fire department. So we're going to call this point B. We need two coordinates for our ordered pair. And it has the same first coordinate as the fire department. So you're going to look up here at the fire department. Actually, I'm going to move these down so I don't have to keep scrolling. Oops, I almost erased. Uh, uh, all right, hold on a sec. Please hold. Well, Mrs. Lehman locks her smart board. Well, that was, oh my goodness. Technical difficulties, kids. Sorry, viewers. I don't know what's happening right now. I'm trying to fix it, though. All right. It's a little out of whack, but I'm going to lock this puppy in place. Lock in place. There we go. And I am going to take these. All right, there we go. 
Okay, so um, it says it has the same first coordinate as the fire department. So what's the first coordinate of the fire department, everyone? Six. Six. Very good. Its second coordinate is half of the fire department's second coordinate. So what's half of seven, everyone? Two and a half. Not two and a half. Three and a half. Yep. All right. So let's plot that. So we're going to go over six and up three and a half. And we're going to label that B. Now, because we're labeling a point, I want to make something very clear. All right. So I'm going to erase it and write it in a different color. Um, so the point that I'm talking about is right here, the blue dot, right? It does not matter where this B is. A lot of kids think, oh, the label's right there that this is 7, 3 or something like that. This could be anywhere around here. It does not matter if it's here, 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 here. It's The coordinates are referring to the point, okay? As silly as that seems, which is good if you find that silly, uh, I have seen kids make that mistake time and time again, and it, it's a really basic thing you need to understand, okay? Let's go ahead and do the next one, which is the police department. We're going to label this P, and it says, the village police department has the same second coordinate as the bank. All right, so first coordinate, we're going to leave alone the same as the bank for its second coordinate. So its Y coordinate is going to also be 3.5. Its first coordinate, it says, is negative 2. Okay, so there's our ordered pair. Let's go ahead and label that up here. Negative 2, 3.5. So go to the left. Two, start at the origin and then go up to 3.5 and that's going to be point H. Oh wow, you're right, P. I'm sorry. Math teachers make mistakes too. All right, please point them out though because I just, I don't know, misfired in the old brain. So um, it's point P. Any questions on this? All right, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, let's go to the next page. We are going to today look at the coordinate plane. We've already reviewed most of it. Um, we're going to look at some wordy examples here, and then we're going to practice plotting some things. So it says, all points on the coordinate plane are described with reference to the origin. What is the origin, and what are its coordinates? We already answered this. What are the coordinates of the origin? Carly, do you know? Zero, zero. Very good. So this is, I think it looks like an owl. Anyway, it's a wise old that. owl origin. All right. And what does that mean? It's a place where what happens? All things begin. No. Um. <laughs> what do you think? Where well, the two axes meet. Very good. The two axes meet. So. It is where the, I'm glad you said that, Liz, because you, you would not say axes, you just say axes, okay? So it is where the two axes meet. Let's be specific, the X and Y axes. It says, to describe locations of points in the coordinate plane, we use blanks of numbers. What do you think? Ordered pairs of numbers. Right? That's going to tell you your location. It says, order is important. So on the coordinate plane, we must use the form. How do we write points? What's first? X, comma, Y. It says, the first coordinate represents the point's location from zero on the x-axis, and the second coordinate represents the point's location from zero on the y-axis. All right, any questions there? So that's pretty much what we've already reviewed. Okay, now we have a coordinate plane here and all four quadrants shown. We are going to label these axes. What axis is this horizontal axis? Somebody shout it out. X. Okay, what about this one? Very good. All right, we're going to grab at least five points on the x-axis and label their coordinates. So I need a volunteer to give me a point that's going to fall on this axis. 
What was the coordinates of a point you saw on that axis? Axis. Kyle. Seven. You need two numbers. Um, ten and ten. Ten and ten, I'm just going to show you, would not be on that line, right? Because if we went three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. It's really blurry. I think it's right about there. Okay? So we don't want ten, ten. Oh. Julius? Seven, zero. Seven, zero. Okay? Because we want it on the x axis. Let me underline that. All right? If it's on the axis, that means it never jumps up or down. So its y coordinate is going to be zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, this is zero, zero, right? So don't count that as one. One is over here. All right, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to erase these little points. We're going to label that K for Kyle. All right, so K. Oh, that was Julius. I'm sorry. Another brain misfire. Let's count them. All right, so. Okay, that's going to be seven, zero. Kyle, you want to retry? Okay, hold on, let me come back through the mic. Alright, so Kyle's going to do a second shot here. Negative 8 and 0. Perfect. Negative 8 and 0. So again, we're moving to the left, 8. So that's going to be negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we're not moving up or down at all. So we're going to have a 0. And that is point K. Who can give me another one? Liz? 8, 0. 8, 0. We're going to call that point L. 8, 0. We're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to label the L for Liz. W for Willow. Come on to you next. 3, 0. 3, 0. I feel like we're calling out numbers on the prices, right? <laughs> you know how they say it like that? Like, I don't know. $25. Zero dollars. Elijah. Negative 10, zero. Okay. E would be negative 10, zero, because we're going to the left 10, but we're not jumping up or down at all. <laughs> Our points aren't. We're not either, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Wait, 9, 10. I said we're not jumping up or down. <laughs> Our points aren't either. Um, uh, okay, what do we notice that all of these points have in common? What do they all have in common? Look at their coordinates. There's a pretty clear pattern we're noticing. I can't help but call on Ethan. Go ahead, Ethan. They all have a uh, y-axis of zero. Not y-axis. x-axis. X -axis. No, you're right with y, but it's not the y-axis, though. It's the y... Cor uh, coordinate. Coordinate, very good. So they all have a y coordinate of zero. All right. Um, now that's kind of bless you difficult for some students to understand because they say, well, it's on the x axis. The x coordinate should be zero. Think about it. You're you are moving right and left, right? So you're going to need a number for an x coordinate bigger than zero or less than zero, but not zero, right? And then you're not moving up or down. Therefore, that is why it's your y coordinate that is zero because these all just stay put right on that um, x coordinate or x axis. What well, must be true about any point that lies on the x axis? You could have infinite possibilities. They all would what? Uh, all of their y coordinate has to be zero. All of their y coordinates would have to be zero. So I'm just going to draw an arrow, nice job, Will, um, to that one, because we're going to do the same thing now with the y axis. Is everybody ready? Yeah. We're kind of zipping here because we spent a little bit of our beginning of class with, yeah. with intelligent conversation. All right. Okay. Use the coordinate plane to answer parts A through C. Graph at least five points on the y-axis and label their coordinates. So let's label these axes. 
This is the x axis. This is the y axis. Notice that they have little arrows on them to indicate that they would keep going forever and ever. All right. So, y axis. So, we need a point that is going to fall on this line. It's a little straighter than what I drew, but on that line right there. Who can give me a point? Jaden. We're going to call this point J for Jaden. 0, 12. 0, 12 works. Very good. So, J for Jaden, 0, 12. We're not going over at all. Nothing to the right or left, but we're going to go up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It is right at the very top. All right, very good. Deja has a point for us. Deja says point D will be 0, 5. 0, 5. Very good. So we're not going to the right or left, but we are going up 5. And that's D for Deja. All right, uh, someone over here. I haven't heard from Sue Ann or Carly yet. 0, 1. 0, 1. Thank you, Carly. We're going to call that point C, 0, 1. Jumping up 1. Somebody give me 1 with a negative. With a negative. William? Uh, 0, negative 4. All right. So W would be 0, negative 4. And I'm going to call that W. And then one last one. I'm going to call this point G. Zero, negative nine. Thank you. Zero, negative nine. Very nice, G. Okay. Any questions on this? What do we notice about all of these points? What do they have in common? What do they have in common, Elijah? All of their x, x, uh, x axis. No, they axis. X coordinate is zero. Very good. So all of the x coordinates are zero. What must be true about any point? We could go on all day. As long as you had what? We'd be fine. The x coordinate of zero, right? It all landed. So same thing down here. It says if the origin is the only point with zero for both coordinates, what must be true about the origin? It's the only point on on both axes. So it is the point of intersection. X and Y axis. As I was telling the class earlier, we're trying to get a really good handle on this kind of stuff because um, as we move forward, you're going to be finding um, polygons on the coordinate plane, drawing those, finding area, perimeter. Um, you will be talking about what axis um, is intersected, so on and so forth. But we are done for part one of lesson 15, so I'd like to thank you for watching Math with Mrs. Lehman. Please don't forget to give this a thumbs up and please subscribe. Have a great day. Bye!